Yo, what's up, guys? This is Tim from Blame Shift, and you're listening to The Loud Spot. Warning. The Loud Spot podcast uses adult humor and adult language in its broadcast. It may be unsuitable for younger audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Also, we are idiots. Please don't take anything. We say offensive or the hard. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Loud Spot. I'm your host, Sebastian, here hanging out with Don and Sam. Tonight, we got a pretty good show. We got a bam, a a bam, a A bam, a bam. (laughs) (laughs) We have a band called uh, Flame Shift that's going to be interviewed on the show later on at the end of, towards the end of the episode. Uh, I said bam because this episode is brought to you by Ink Nation, a tattoo convention that we are throwing here in Oklahoma City. And we just got word yesterday that Bam Margera will be coming to the convention. So we're excited about that. So I guess Bam was on my mind. That's right. Tickets go on sale soon. And you want to go to ink-nation.com to get those tickets. Uh, Probably look to about Monday. You know, I like how you say ink hyphen nation. That's so, uh, what's that so proper? <laughs> I say, da- I say ink dash nation. That's what I say. <laughs> I'm going to pre-warn everyone. Sebastian is in a sluggish mood, mister. I'm going to sleep am. all day. He's yeah. been sleeping all day. He did an interview earlier today that you guys will hear with blame chip. It literally slept 30 minutes prior to the interview. Yep. He said he was going to, I, 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 I was the one harassing both Don and Sebastian early in the morning, knowing that they stayed up the night before to like two, three o'clock in the morning. Because we were and working then, on Ink Nation and, stuff. Oh, yeah, hold on, we I was gonna, I was gonna <laughs> defend you. I wasn't gonna throw you quite underneath the bus, just halfway just underneath, just run over legs. foot, just your legs. <laughs> but and Sebastian, the first thing he says to me, I'm gonna sleep for another hour. LOL, and I'm like. No, he's not. He's going to be up in like 30 minutes. Eh, about 45 minutes. He called. All right, I'm up. I'm up. But I'm probably going to go sleep later on. I did. I felt <laughs> back sure to sleep. He did. Woke up, did the interview, apologized for being tired and just waking up. Then I fell back to sleep after the interview. <laughs> and I woke up an hour before the, we had to do this episode. That's Lucky. It. So, I had, I had, I had to nothing work prepared. Oh, I was I've up been, just in front of you and I had to go to work. Yep. Now I, I I was late, but we're not going to talk about that. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Invasion takes time, and we shot a little video ad that we're still going to work on, and it just it, you know it, we were doing it way longer. Um, it took us a lot longer to do than, than what we, you we, <laughs> we had planned, but that was but that was because we got word that Bam was going to be at a, at the convention, so we had to make flyers and do all kinds of stuff. And then I didn't really feel like doing the ad after we got that good news, so. Uh, we finally got around to it about 11 o'clock. I think we finally started <laughs> filming for the ad. And Don was, what time did you come over here? Like 7, 7.30? Yeah, 7.30. So we got yeah. around to it eventually. <laughs> eventually. Eventually. Right. At least we're not in other countries where you probably can't even do that. So <laughs> at least we're not in other countries like some of these bands were in that we're going to talk about that were banned. A lot of B words, bands, band, uh, wait, bands. Bam. Band, bam, bam. <laughs> okay, all That's right. Mister for Sebastian tonight. We yeah, yep, he's gonna. Just, yeah, he's gonna be like <laughs> Shelly Shelly sells seashells by the seashore or something <laughs> later on. She is it Shelly or she sells? She sells oh, Shelly. I I know Shelly sells seashells. It's she sells seashells by the seashore. Congratulations, no one knows who Shelly is who Shelly. She, Shelly's the bitch that sells seashells by the seashore. That's what well, we're doing. Shelly, she sells seashells by the seashore. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. Don't ask me. The, those drama days are done. I can't. I couldn't tell you what it was. All right. Well, so. we got thirteen bands that were banned from different countries for different reasons. We don't have the reasons for all of them. We're gonna go through this list, and some of these reasons are just stupid be honest with you so, and, and i think a lot of these a lot of these have the bands have been lifted from these countries all right first first uh band is led zeppelin what led zeppelin. they were banned what? from singapore 
Oh, I thought it was Spain. I, I thought I heard something about Spain. So uh, it starts with an S. You're close. That's right. I mean, not the same language or, but they're yeah. both brown. Oh, Spanish people are kind of white looking, actually. <laughs> they're white. <laughs> Don't get racist on this. <laughs> That's not racist. That's the color of the skin. Okay. No. They, they were banned for long hair. What? Oh, Singapore does have those crazy yeah. laws. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Chewing oh, yeah. gum. Chewing gum on the on the concrete. Uh, uh -huh. You can't spray paint graffiti. Obviously, remember Michael, whatever his name, that got whipped back in the now, early it yeah. is the cleanest place. I mean, I heard that you could literally eat your food off the road and you were good because it was that clean. I'm Sebastian, that. That, that sounds like a should go for us. <laughs> Five seconds like rule. Five, Five seconds second rule. Still applies to me in Singapore. Now we're see. Now we're going to be banned in Singapore just for talking yep. about it. That's right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, cannibal corpse. They are banned Germany. in Germany, G Germany, yeah. Australia, and Russia for graphic content. Really? And by I the mean, way. You you can go to loudwire.com and, and and get the full details on all this stuff if you want to go more into details about any of the bands that we're talking about. But go, Germany, go ahead. Sam. Germany has songs that have graphic language. Oh, well, you're going to be surprised who else is banned from Germany. In fact, let's go into that one since we're talking about it. Let me get my notes here. He's got it cue cards, to, folks. I got cue, cue cards. cards. Yes, I do. I know who it is. Oh, Almstein. Rammstein's banned from Germany. They're from Germany. Yes, <laughs> hilarious. They're, that's they are that's what I was about to. That's who I was about to say. That is a German band, and how how is that? I did. They have graphic language. I mean, I mean, they live he, there, but he, he can't play there. And he runs around with a false penis out of his pants. On top of that, <laughs> well, the reason why they're banned from Germany is because they said their music was harmful to young people. Eh, so. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I don't know what they're saying, so I don't know. I can see that or not. Exactly. It's in German. Du hast mich. Yeah. I think that means I hate you or something. Okay. Uh, the Beatles, they were banned from Israel. I okay. thought the Beatles were wholesome. Uh, well, no, it's because they, they they were so famous that they banned them to protect their youth. Oh, okay. because there was a Beatles That's craze. They came out yeah. like 10 oh. albums in one year, I guess. I didn't know that. I'm, I don't follow the Beatles. I'm not a big, huge Beatles. Uh, I'm thing. not. And, and neither neither am I. But I can tell you for the American craze, they did, they did not know. Well, they knew, but they didn't know it was going to take off so quickly for the, for the Beatles. They thought that it would just be a, you know, fly by night kind of thing where that you know fans would listen to like one two songs and then religion would happen and they'd be like ah don't listen to the beatles they're corrupting your mind but instead everyone repented and said now forget you church we're going to worship the beatles and it grew faster that way as you guys know uh once someone tells you no uh it <laughs> actually means yes yeah, here in america yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't the beatles sing that christmas song uh that's yes. a little trippy sounding i hated that <laughs> song growing up Remember, we did this a year ago. Yeah. For I, I, how does the song songs go? You how, does go? how does it go? Uh, uh, I can't even remember. Simply having, having a wonderful, wonderful. Christmas. Yeah. I hate that song. You know what? I don't hate it as much now as I used to. I used to cringe. I heard that song in Macy's, and I was like, that stupid song. And I was like, <laughs> reminded me of a bunch of people. It reminded me of a bunch of people on acid. That's what it reminded me of. Uh, that's because they probably were. So. I was that's, about to say, that's, that's, that's time frame. Every year I'm bringing this up about how much I used to hate that song. That's right. <laughs> I like it better now. Okay, we have a, uh, I don't know who this band is. I've heard of them. Uh, Bohemoth. Bohemoth? Bohemoth. But, okay. They're banned in Russia. I did, didn't really say why, but they're banned in Russia. The Rolling Stones uh, was banned in Japan because hmm. Mick Jagger had drug convictions. Oh, I thought so, it's because he had, he had moves like Jagger. So, so is, is, any of, is any of them banned from Canada? Because I know Canada doesn't allow anybody with a DUI. Yeah, a DUI or a domestic dispute. Uh, yeah, but the, uh, addicts can go to Canada, but alcoholics can't. Yeah. And um, 
the uh, right, so, abuse people. <laughs> well, our, 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 de- our dear friend Jackson uh, was in Jack's Diaries. Is was banned from the United States. He's uh, okay. So let me let me tell you a story. He he's banned from the United States because he came to the United States illegally because he was offered a tour over here but didn't get the appropriate paperwork in time and it was they a, a certain band which i'll not say say because they're still out there said no just go ahead and come on over when he came over and the band came over of course customs not- noticed uh you guys are in a band i see guitar equipment uh, a lot of uh, boxes of merchandise, all these kind of things, and that's how they caught him. And, and that's a different caught, kind of visa. It, right? it is. It's an it's an O one visa versus a regular, just coming on tourist visa. So, unfortunately, because of things that happened, and because Jackson is very passionate, we'll call it, about the, how things are handled. He's uh, Italian. He, ar- <laughs> he argued with the uh, with customs and ended up getting sent back. And a ten-year ban uh, in 2000, uh, 2015, I think it was, or something like that. Oh, 2013. He's only had a couple of years. He's had a couple of years, and we got to reach out because as soon as his band is over, he's coming to Vegas. That so we can watch a UFC fight together. So there you go. J- uh, he, yeah, he's into that. He's into that uh, fighting stuff. And that's not one of the bands, though. So don't count that as one no. of the thirteen. Okay. Yeah. Which I didn't count. I think they're thirteen. Okay. Lamb of God banned in malaysia for blasphemous okay. Okay. blasphemous content that's right that's right you can't you can't you can't uh have i can't i can't, don't even remember what the religions are uh punjabi and oh no and that's that's india uh malaysia shit. uh punjabi. i don't know what it is I, i'm thinking <laughs> thailand but i i, I I'm, I'm getting that wrong i just know i, am. I don't know i know I i'm getting know. it all right Cr- cradle of filth is banned from not China but mainland China. Okay, so, so they, they, they're the outskirts of like the. They can play H- Hong Kong, but they can't yeah, play they, the yes. rest of. And they did play Hong Kong is where they for unsuitable music. <laughs> That's so stupid. Like, <laughs> well, if we play for- Hong Kong, then where else is there to play in China? Oh. I mean, that's the big All right, one. So remember, Hong Kong is is uh, is kind of like Washington D.C. It has its own set of rules. It's uh, its own. That was that was the only non-communist part of the rest China. of China. The rest of China is uh, is ran by Xi Jinping right now. So. Just to let you know, like how do you Hong know Kong this? Is, unfortunately, <laughs> how my did brain you say his just... name so Chinese sounding? Ching Ching Ping. <laughs> Xi Jinping. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll I mean, they were that. just in the news with San Francisco, and the conspiracy is where are all those homeless people now. So we'll just put we'll just throw that out there since Sebastian likes uh, conspiracy theories. What what <laughs> what happened to homeless people in San Francisco? <laughs> they all <laughs> all the homeless people went to China. <laughs> no. Uh, okay. So the the conspiracy theory goes like this: They came to uh, you know a bunch of leaders met in San Francisco, and and uh, Governor Newsom cleaned up the cities of San Francisco. But there's no footage of him cleaning up San Francisco. And there's where did all those homeless people go? Why don't we have how, videos of how all is there going to be footage of him? Was he going to sweep the homeless people away? Well, I'm like, just saying <laughs> everyone's got a phone. I would think someone would be like, you know, watching a homeless you know, guy get kicked were out. Of- like rallying yeah. them out, mm, which yeah. is what they did so. in Oklahoma City downtown area. Whenever they were building the new I-40, they pushed them all out. And now they're lower. In UConn, now Oklahoma. Now they're in mm-hmm. UConn. Meridian, now they're Meridian. The, and I oh, yeah, they're all Meridian MacArthur. Now, over there. now they live in Sebastian's house. That's right. Yeah, that's right. No, <laughs> hey, get out of here. Get out of here. I just don't want to try to sneak in the room just now. Shoeless gonna, Joe. Do the podcast there, buddy. Okay, all right. Meth mouth Mike. Meth, <laughs> meth mouth. I, one time I called a meth head methy metherton. That was not good. Uh, okay. <laughs> all right. This is my favorite one. This is my favorite one. You know, I'm going to go back to the meth guy real quick. Uh, <laughs> I, I said, Squirrel. hey there, Methy Metherton. He goes, what'd you say? I was like, Methy Metherton, <laughs> you look like you do meth. He like stood up and I was like, I'm just joking. Let me buy you a shot, brother. And I bought him a shot. We became friends. Well, yep. that's, a, that's, how Sebastian, 
that's that's how Sebastian meets most people in bars. He'll he'll offend oh. you real quick, and then he'll buy you a shot, and then he'll bum cigarettes off you the rest of the night. <laughs> okay, this now this is my favorite one. Fred Durst, not Limp Bizkit, Australia. Just, Aust- just oh. Fred Durst. Just Fred Durst. No, banned from Ukraine. Hmm. Now his his wife was i don't know if they're still married or not but he was married to a lady from ukraine okay Got and it. the reason why they banned him was for the interest of guaranteeing the security of the state what <laughs> the interest of securing of guaranteeing the security of the state because fred durst you know he's a loud mouth i guess and they just thought right if, he was gonna move he was, he was gonna, gonna move he was gonna move to ukraine and would have done nothing who was from there the state? huh yeah, they call themselves. I mean, it's a country, but the, the security of the state means just the land. Yeah, yeah, because he was gonna. I thought that was, I thought that was a U.S. term, not the United States. No, no, security of the state. I think is a. I think country. Is, uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not a. I'm not a, <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not a countryist. <laughs> You're not a, pol- a political politician. Yeah, I, I just mm-hmm. don't know that many things to be honest with you. Okay, <laughs> the the kinks, the kinks. They were banned from the United States. Hmm. Or full of or disastrous behavior on stage. What'd they do? Destroy something? Uh, yeah, so I guess they were put on some TV show and in retaliation to the promoter who kind of screwed him on some stuff. I guess they just were really destroyed whatever hmm. during some sort of That sounds like a good show. Like that, so. So that, yeah. like a good so the state didn't ban them from the state. The U.S. got involved and banned them from all fifty states. So Loudwire says that's on. Hey, it's on their website. I don't know. It's on. It's on. I, 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 I didn't. I mean, I, I did my own research. I, I researched other people's research on it. Well, I just figured you know, there, there's there was a lot in the forties, fifties, and sixties. There was a lot of artists that were banned from certain states and and allowed in certain states. I mean, Johnny Cash. Elvis Presley, uh, Little yeah. Richard. Uh, there's a lot of those Sun Record artists that Tutti were banned. Frutti. Yeah, it, due to the fact is, whatever reason, Elvis was because he was too controversial with the shaking of his hips. Can you believe shaking of the hips now? I mean, we, we're watching little <laughs> people twerk on stage half naked, you know, and stuff like that. So I, I couldn't even imagine trying to. Miley Cyrus. <laughs> Is that who twerks? I don't know who twerks. Uh, Everybody was dancing twerk. on it was a party at the USA, and she grabbed the pole they, so she don't fall down, and they said she's dancing a pole. So remember that? Oh. No. Yeah. No, okay. I don't follow her career, so I don't know. <laughs> Mr. Ching that's Ching Ching over there. You know yeah, that's a, that, that's a lie. You were all about that Hannah Montana life. Best of both <laughs> Carcass. I never heard of a band called Carcass before, but they're banned in Malaysia Heavy. for li- lyrical content. Uh and, oh, okay. The last two is a band called Sabaton. Never heard of them. They got. I think I, I, I think I've seen their name, but I have never listened to them. I'm assuming they're heavy as. They're banned not. from Russia for the lyrics, and my second favorite one is the last one, um, Bloodhound Gang. <laughs> I love oh, Bloodhound yeah. Gang. I they are banned Gang. from Russia, also. Yes. Uh, because no, the singer put the Russian flag down his pants and told them not to tell Vladimir Putin. I guess he found out about it and they banned him from Russia. <laughs> him being a smart ass. No, no, no yes. that, that band might still be in effect. <laughs> they they still are. They still do the festival circuit every once in a while. So all right. Let's before we go into the Axel Rose discussion, uh, why don't we go ahead and play Upon a burning a new one. body. Yep. Is the a band new one. called Kill Shot or is the song called Kill Shot? Song's called Kill Shot from a Upon a Burning Body or Boys Down in San Antonio, Texas. So here you go. All right. <laughs> It's all or nothing, blood in, blood out. You either played for this or get the fuck out. Kill shot! Oh, oh, bitch, kill shot! In the darkest night, no word, no heart, throw the 
got to say something, okay? I have never heard upon a burning body before in my life, ever. Oh, they that is so quite great. possibly one of the best songs I have ever heard. And no, to me, yes. No, I mean, you can say no there's, if you want to. There's better shot. There's better shots. There's songs. there's better songs that they have their older catalog and that I fell in love with. That's why I, when I saw a new "Upon a Burning Body" song, I was like, "Oh, I got to listen to this." And I was like, "Dude, oh, those guys are sick. They're heavy. They're heavy. Was, they're heavy, I mean, but I'm, they're good." I was smiling when the I song was playing. <laughs> when the guy screams, that, rah, like I was like, "Oh, goddamn." Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you haven't listened to Upon a Burning Body. It's it's no, I've band. never heard them. And, and you know what? I I heard I heard them now. I, <laughs> I, if I was sleeping and tired earlier, I'm no longer tired anymore, and I'm no longer nope. sleeping on that band. Good, <laughs> yeah, good, yeah. good song choice. That I think is one of my favorite songs I've ever heard us play on this show. I'm not. I swear to God, I loved it that much. I like and I Falling in Reverse is probably one of my top favorite bands. That song right there. I put that above uh, falling in reverse. I liked it. It resonated yeah. in my bones. Apparently, <laughs> it had enough hate in it for Sebastian today. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's talk hate, about speaking of, yeah. speaking of hate, Axel, Axel Rose. Okay. You get a lot of hate. Sexual allegations. 1989. So almost 35 years ago, from a lady named Sheila Kennedy. Who is a penthouse? Was a probably was. not anymore. Thirty five years later, she's probably like sixty uh, now. Best. She uh, might be hot. You don't she could. Yeah, yeah, there's not sixty year olds. There are, but you know, how, how, she's, how many pl she's, playgirls she's not, have you done? How many playgirls have you done? None. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> isn't, isn't the statue of limitations up after so many years for that? I don't know. Okay. Bill Cosby went to Bill Cosby went to prison, so I, I don't know. For quaaludes. Okay, this well, is that's, exactly that's a thing. But what she's claiming, I thought there was a statute of limitations. Well, okay, well, well okay, well, what there she's was. claiming is so in 1983, she was pet of the year. Now, penthouse is not like Playboy. Isn't penthouse the dirty one where you see the dicks yes, inside the vaginas? Okay, yeah, yeah. So, so I, and I understand all these women are going to hate me for saying this, but I mean. You're putting yourself out there like a whore. Oh, and, come on. And, hey, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Come on. You're putting, you're putting yourself out there in these dirty magazines. It's not Playboy as at least, you know, kind of a but that, classier that, way to pose nude. Where penthouse no. is more like get rammed. And, and okay. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> I'm not a feminist. So whatever. Sorry. Hate me or don't hate me. Anyways, I guess he. Now, here's here's the allegations is. Um. Uh, she went up to the hotel room uh, by herself with Axl Rose because she had a friend with her, but the friend wasn't hot enough, I guess. <laughs> so she wasn't allowed in the room. But apparently he started being rough, and there was another girl there, and he forced anal sex on her, which is wrong. Okay, I, but why wait 35 years to come out with exactly. this? Why, are, you, are, are you broke now? Are you a broke bitch all of a sudden, and you need some money? Why did I just sound like Chris Rock? Chris, I, yeah, I was gonna say, yes, yeah, it's exactly. My my oh, thing no. is, is she voluntarily went to a hotel room with a person that is in a rock band that is known to be very out there, very you know, a lot of different things back then that was all over the tabloids about how Axl Rose was, and she knew this. She went in there and she what she expected him to treat her like a princess. I mean, well, that, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a woman and I would fully expect that. Well, she went up there too often. I would assume she went up there being a penthouse pet of the year uh, model. Well, with, yeah, you know, to get laid. Penis but... is inside your vagina. I would assume you're going up there too. You're not, you're not this wholesome, you know, Christian pilgrim, a uh, pioneer woman baking homemade pies for grandpa and grandma. I don't even know what I was going with that. I, but what I, I'm saying is, I got lost in my own conversation in my head. Yep. But what I'm saying is she went up there to have sex. Mm -hmm. Maybe she didn't right. want anal sex, but that's what she got. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so that's what I was going to say in the story. She claims that she knew what was going to happen. She knew what was going on, and Axl Rose was on, apparently on drugs. There was lithium, all kinds of stuff. And Good he over. Yeah. Yeah. He had 
sleeps with another girl and made some claims and some some derogatory marks to her and then pulled her the the penthouse girl to the side and said hey me and you are doing this she didn't fight it she just went along with it but unfortunately she was she did claim that it was anal sex and again 35 years later we're hearing about this the next day not and even a year a couple of yeah so my, my, oh, my, my biggest question out of all this sam is Why lithium's drink? a drug like who it, says, it, "Hey man, you want to come to my house and do some lithium?" So, like, who says that? so mi <clears throat> all right. So mix with alcohol. Yeah, mix with lithium? alcohol. It yeah, like mix a battery, with alcohol. Like you eat a battery. No, no, no. No, lithium, kind of lithium is actually Heart. for bipolar. It's a bipolar uh, medication. Lithium is bipolar yeah. or mental health medicine. And right. so, if you mix those things, then you get you know different effects mentally. It's a it's a mental high thing. That sounds and fun. Then, yeah. That was that was the Kinda thing like, to do back in the nineties. Hey, Don, you want to do some lithium? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I, just, I've already just, taken lithium before. I'm good. <laughs> it oh, does <okay>. nothing. <laughs> just have Sebastian not take his uh his his blood pressure medication. Blood pressure medication. Just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, let's take a quick commercial, uh, quick break with our new song uh, from Widow Seven, uh, WTF, right here on the Loud Spot. Another great song. Widow Seven has been on the podcast uh, in the past, and good, good. The singer, the one cool dude. So good. I like that song. That was another banger, man. This song, Sam. I, I did like that one. Sam's muted again. <laughs> <laughs> every time, every time, every time. I mute and I mute myself because I talk off the air, so I don't. So well, you guys don't hear my quit voice. Quit talking but... to people, Sam. <laughs> I have Be to. quiet I have like to. us. So, guys, that uh, brand new song, WTF, Widow 7, is out right now. They just released it. It's today, Friday. So when you guys are hearing this on Monday, add that to your playlist. It helps those bands out. And see, catch them on the road. They will be on the we road. Just, 
we should just talk like it's Monday every time we film. It's not even Friday, it's Saturday. <laughs> oh yeah, Saturday. That's right. So it came it's out normal, we can only record. We normally record on yeah. uh, on 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 uh, Fridays, but Thanksgiving was yeah. was Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Thursday. <laughs> How was that yesterday? How was that yesterday? No more. I was sitting here thinking, like, okay, this airs Monday. How am I going to say this? I'm just going to say Thanksgiving was Thursday. But yeah. uh, I I'm curious what everybody's family traditions are because I know that I had a lot growing up that no longer exist. And same, same th like, you know, yeah. my family used to always play dominoes. You know, um, all the aunts and uncles used to take uh, the van trip, you know, to the convenience store, even though we had, you know, 10, two liters of soda, but they needed a drink. And, you know, so... My, you know, my family. I thought my, she was going to go down the road of playing spades, uh, playing dominoes, playing spades, and then and then drinking like certain sodas, like Fayo or something <laughs> like that, or whatever. As called. as a kid, you know, like when you grow up in the hood. <laughs> no. I, I mean, she. Grew up I did. On the south side. South side. Southwest Fifty Nine. I, I saw this tattoo earlier. This guy that said "Side South." <laughs> right. He looks at those... it in the mirror. He looks oh, at it in the mirror today. Dude, I don't get some of these horrible tattoos people have when you, the tattoo artist should draw it on them first. Anyways, uh, as a kid, I guess you know we ate a lot of Puerto Rican food. My grandparents, my, my mom's grandparents, would come over to the house uh, on Thanksgiving, and my aunts and uncles would be there, and that was kind of a tradition. But as we all got older. I moved to Oklahoma. My brother lives in DC. My sister lives way up North California. So traditions do change. And it's, I think when you're younger and traditions change, it's probably harder because you're used to certain memories that you like. But as you get older, you know, you start making your own traditions. And recently, um, last year, and then this year, we wound up going to Olathe, Kansas uh, to see my dad's sister, my aunt Enid. And uh her my cousin went did it at their house and it's crazy because whenever i think of my cousins i still think of them as like 12 years old you know and she's like 36 or some shit like that now, like 34 right. she's in her 30s <laughs> but she's married has three kids of her own so thanksgiving's over there but yeah they, they played a uh, uh dice and i last year we played a, a, a card game which i think they played this year before we left but yeah, just normal, no, no Puerto and Rican then, food. And then, but I do poured, miss Puerto Rican food on Thanksgiving. And then poor Don say. and I, poor Don and I had to look at all your stupid flexing pictures of you guys checking <laughs> into the Hilton, and then yeah. cream boulet, la la la. <laughs> la <laughs> you hey, 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 Sam's response was, "That's just expensive custard." <laughs> and, it and, and it is, but you know what? I was, and on my behalf, I was drunk when I sent those. <laughs> I, we know, we know this. We know this. Uh, I grew up in a Mexican household, so it was tamales mixed with. I thought you grew up in a Samoan household. No, I grew. I did not grow up in a Samoan household. I would have known by then. Um, <laughs> that was what it, when I was really, really young. What I'm saying, when I grew up, I'm putting from like you know ten to you know ten to seventeen, basically. Yeah. So I grew up in a Mexican household, and it was tamales and and uh, aunts and uncles that aren't even related to me from the Mexican side, the boyfriend why did, side. Why, why did thing. you sound Mexican when you said that? They ain't even related to me. <laughs> they ain't even related. I say, I'm telling you, they were the, but de la raza, you know? Uh, but that's how I grew up. So it's funny now that, that um, and then uh, when I was married, we had the traditional, you know, turkey thing. And but thank God there was a Mexican in the family that would always bring tamales. Uh, my my uh, tamales. exactly because that's the way I grew up. I don't know. I don't know Thanksgiving without tamales. It's weird. It that, seems that, make, not that makes sense. That makes yeah. sense because I'm used to the traditional turkey dressing, mashed potatoes, deviled eggs, which do yeah. not leave the plate of deviled eggs around me because they will be gone. But I did good this year. Yep. I was You'll smell her I, later. I, I You'll smell her later. later. <laughs> I was going to say, you might be moving away from her farts. If you know <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, 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 know, you I know, live my, alone. My, one of my favorite she foods, blames the dog. Blames the one dog. Of my, one of my favorite foods is, uh, and people don't like it. So when I was making my plate at Thanksgiving, I had room for one more thing, and I know they don't go back for seconds till maybe later on. 
it was between the uh, sweet potatoes or mm -hmm. the green bean casserole. And I love green bean casserole. It's something yeah. that I only don't Thanksgiving. I don't know if I would like it all the time, <laughs> but with the dried onion, crisp onions on top and all that stuff, I love yeah. me some green bean casserole. So. I, I actually ate that this year, which normally I don't. But what I was saying was my father is now with a Mexican woman. And so the last four years, her family is Mexican. So she would make enchiladas or, you know, stuff like that. And because of what I'm used to, I never touched yeah, that. Yeah. I love enchiladas. Any other day, I would have been down to grub. But it's just something with me with Thanksgiving. I have to eat the turkey. I have to eat the deviled yeah. eggs, you know. And so that was my culture, I guess. Yeah, no, no I mean, I grew, this, up, I, grew, I grew up pretty eating, eating pretty much white food, you know, except for we did have we did have uh, Thanksgiving uh, Puerto Rican food at our Thanksgiving. But we also had the turkey, mashed potatoes. This year, I didn't actually see any corn, uh, which normally I didn't we did either. Have, so. My dad always well, I, has I, I, love, corn. I love all the Thanksgiving classics, but throw a little, you know, Puerto Rican mix in there. And I like it. Yeah, I, I'm amazed that your dad doesn't get up and start salsa dancing, too, because I know. He, oh, he does. He, he, he does. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's he's, just, he's, he's just not in Oklahoma or Lake <laughs> yeah. Kansas. He was salsa dancing in California. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, I got to spend this Thanksgiving as I have for the past seven years for the, uh, well, not for the past seven years, for the past couple of years on the road eating at Petro and their Thanksgiving dinner, which is not bad, but it's definitely, Golden it's Corral, missing. Golden man. Come on. Well, well uh, the thing is, is I, I will say this. Um, and, and, and Tiffany and I discussed this. It isn't really about the food. It's about the people. And I think yeah, that's what that we missed correct. this year. As we're just sitting there looking at each other going, well, the turkey's good. The food's good, but it's not. I want to drink a beer. I want to watch football. I want to poke fun at little kids. Uh, maybe probably have them say inappropriate things to adults and watch them get in trouble. <laughs> Those kind of things. That's what makes Thanksgiving. As much as you Most may definitely. dislike your family, dislike your family throughout the rest of the year uh just remember thanksgiving is that fun time that you're thankful for them being there with you guys to to harass them and i uh, like my family from a distance i do like my family I actually I actually like my family which a lot of Unless people do not like their families and i don't know why these people want all these kids because the kids always grow up normally hating each other anyways right when they get right. older the siblings don't really I, you know, I, I don't talk to my brother or sister that often, but when we do get, when we do see each other, we at least get along, but that's because we all live far away from each other. So we can that's tolerate right. each other probably. And then you I harass mom and dad. <laughs> I actually learned that I raised my children right because Leland did not want to attend Thanksgiving. He just rather have slept and Bub went in there, barged in and told him to get up now. And, you know, just being that stern man of the house. And he was like, don't lie. You told him you're not getting family. food unless he's out here. That's what you said. No, he's not getting no, food unless he's out there. No, he, he told, he told Leland, he was like, it's Thanksgiving. It's time for us to be a family. I, and, you know, and so that made me so proud, even though he probably did it a little too aggressive, you, his, his motive was good. And it made me feel so good that my son wants to keep the family together. I, I, I don't know uh, your son all that well, but what I do know about him is he seems like the things that you have said, he's big into tradition. He likes that yes. close togetherness of a family. So that, that's awesome. Um, sounds like a I love Thanksgiving. Chris, Christmas is <laughs> <laughs> what? He sounds, like a, he sounds like a Republican. I'm just saying. Oh, he probably gonna is. Have, yeah. He probably oh, Oklahoma, like man. He, yeah. he, Oklahoma he South Side. Republican. He is Republican. <laughs> now, but now if you, if you go a little bit north of the South Side, but still South Side, they're Democrats. Right. <laughs> down what? In, north down of 29? North of, no, no, really north of I-240. <laughs> no, because that's 59th, that's 59th Street, and that that's still that's still Hood South Side where I was. That's why they're Democrats. That's what I I'm was. saying. They're all <laughs> Mexicans and blacks over there. Right. No, there it's it's white trash. Thank you. You have to go to about 44th. Oh, 44th. And then you get that. 44th. Yeah. Now we just <laughs> lost everyone, in, 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 all of our listeners in New York City, LA, because they're like, who cares? No, about New York City, they're all Puerto Rican, so they're fine. <laughs> Only in certain they're, they're Puerto Rican, sure. Black Rican, Jewish. Uh, 
Yeah. Not a lot of Mexicans over there in, in New York. I mean, I mean, they're, no, they're, some, they're there. They're, they're there, but they blend in with the Puerto Ricans, so no one ever knows. Real right? quick before we get into this interview um, with Blame Shift, I do want to just quick mention of Rick and Morty. I love that cartoon. There has been some recent backlash on them because the new voice actors now i have not seen the new rick and morty because i don't have cable i, I gotta wait for it to come out on hulu which who knows when that's going to be and i probably could have looked some clips up but i woke up late and i did not do that yeah. but I, but but people don't like the new voice actors for rick and morty and i that's one of my favorite cartoons and i'm like dude it's just a voice get over it that's people it. have to yeah. complain about everything you know we had the same change with the simpsons remember when they changed drawer the uh they changed their artist and they start drawing them different. I thought yep. they draw drew them better now. Um, but there was a lot of backlash from that. And and I think you're probably going to agree with me with this one. Get over it, people. It, it's yeah, just a over. show. <laughs> if you don't, it, it, don't watch it anymore. Just grow up and just move on. Yep. Uh, on top of your topic, I'd like to also bring up Matt Reif and his topic, which is hilarious. He just had a Netflix special. He had a little, a, a little joke in there about, domestic uh, violence and the hostess that was seating them at a restaurant hey. and the jokes, the punchline goes, well, you know, at least put her in the back in the kitchen. But if she knew how to cook, then she probably, she probably wouldn't have that black eye. People got upset oh, yeah. and, oh. and got upset and angry. And he, and so he, uh, a, a couple days later, maybe even a week later, he's like, I'm sorry if you got upset. Here's a link to my apology. <laughs> the link, you click the link and it went to, Special need helmets. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> that's well, hilarious. Matt Rife right there. From that's what I right. see, I, I just I just started following him. I know he's been around for a while, but I just started kind of following him. Guys, he's funny. A joke. He, so. he goes, he goes, and he, I like before he says a joke. He he goes, he puts a foot out there like just testing the waters. He yeah. says, <laughs> audience, to see, I, I can't you can't even see it on camera. But I'm putting my foot out there. Uh, okay. He's testing the waters, but you know, Matt, he he's funny and. I was gonna say, did he really apologize? Because he's big on not no. apologizing for things. Yeah, yeah, that's the whole okay. point of it. He's trying to make because it's just a joke. Move on from it, guys. If you don't like it, and I think we're seeing a lot of this anti wokeness coming back. You know, people fighting back and saying, "I'm About not gonna apologize." Too. For, yeah, I'm not gonna apologize for a joke. It's just a joke. You don't like it? Don't watch me. Don't buy my tickets. It's the same thing we we hear from Ronnie. It's the Ronnie Radke from Fallen in Reverse. Don't apologize, guys. If you say what you say, own up to it, move on, yeah. and then just go from there. It's so when you we're, apologize. We're all human when, you, when you apologize is when you start getting some bad. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. That's when people oh, are yeah. like, oh, he, and the people talk more. If you're like, you know what? Screw you. Send a link to a bunch of, yeah. you know, people. With, <laughs> I don't know why I'm coughing all of a sudden. People with helmets on or whatever. Uh, yeah. I don't know how, like, phlegm all of a sudden just uh, come my throat. Anyways, let's get on. Uh, to the interview with Blame Shift. That's all the time we got. On. All right. We are sitting here with Tim, who's in a band called Blame Shift. You guys are here promoting your new song, All or Nothing. But, you know, is it really a new song? Because didn't you guys write the song before COVID? Yeah, dude, it was crazy. Like We were out there for NAM um, in 2019. We did, a, we did three songs, which this... Song All or Nothing was part of those th those three tracks. We did like a party in Vegas. We went to NAMM while we were out there with our producer. Um, and then fucking two weeks later, you know, it's like everything's getting shut down. And like we have these three songs we luckily recorded. But then like, you know, a lot of things shifted in that time frame um, with like bands not being, you know, our whole livelihood was touring all these all for, you know, 200 days a year. So like we kind of... Uh, you know, it got weird for, for a while, but we have these songs and, you know, we put out Came for Blood, which is the first single from these three songs and then All or Nothing and we got one more, one more track. But yeah, like three, literally three years ago. It's crazy. Why did you pick this song to be released later on? I don't know. There's always like an, a preference of like what, how you want to roll out material to your fans, you know? Um, the first track was... Uh, more of our like high energy track. This song is different for us. I feel you know it's a different vibe. It's got and we wanted to like I don't know it, it just an order of how we wanted to kind of hit, hit our music out to our fans was uh, why we kind of just put this one out second. It's we feel it's different. You know it's got a different vibe than than typical blame shift like even like writing structure and stuff. You know. Go with something different of, other than the norm. It probably has to be kind of a little bit exciting. See what your fans that that followed you guys. 
for a while. You guys have been a band for hell. I mean, over a decade, 25 national tours. Yeah. We've done over a million and a half miles of, of traveling. We had, you know, a bus around vegetable oil. We played, you know, every state that you probably never want to go to 30 times over. So it's, uh, yeah, I think, I think we're right around 26 or 27, uh, full U S tours we've, we've done. So this is all you do now. This is, I mean, you're the band blame shift. That is your job. You know, it, it's crazy because it, it was for all these years. And then, uh, you know, out of it, we, um, we created this, this jewelry brand called strung from, uh, my broken guitar strings. And it kind of, you know, now took precedent of, over the band where like, um, you know, just trying to come up with ways to make money as an artist is, is really tough, you know, and yeah. to make you know, like we live in Long Island. It's an expensive place. I mean, and just to pay basic expenses here, um, you know, you, you, you can't really survive just being a musician, you know, and the people that do, they usually always have a side hustle, you know. So um, our side hustle ended up turning into like our main hustle and the band. And, and now it helps fund our band if we want to like you know, do a, a tour and, and rent a bus or whatever. We, we have some funding to actually like do the things we really want to do with our band instead of like trying to get money from a label or whatever, you know? So strong is a music inspired jewelry that you guys make out of what you said, broken guitar strings, right? Well, yeah, that, that, I mean, that's how it started. You know, I said like, so all the bracelets are inspired by different song titles so you wear okay. a playlist of your favorite rock and metal songs, you know, everything from like walk from Pantera to, uh, to in the end to, uh, you know, ever long. So all your favorite rock songs, you know, you could wear, you could buy an inspired bracelet by that song. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's, people really dig it. You know, you get to, you get to wear your favorite music on your wrist. We, we also started doing like collabs. We made the official uh, bracelet for the rock and roll hall of fame this year. Um, we do, we do festivals how, too, so. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. How do you get into making jewelry for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Is that something that you, like, went to them and were like, look at what we do, or did they come to you guys? Because it's so original. Like, it's, uh, I think it's an original, I've never seen it, so I think it's an original idea. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, you know, people make jewelry out of guitar strings, but, like, we branded it. We we really tightened what it is and made it like people that love music and that love certain song titles. It's it's all different concept, you know. Um, so it was funny. We were actually we were a sponsor for a incarceration festival in Ohio, like okay. maybe two, two years ago. And I was flying home after doing like a four day the four day festival there, and uh, my flight got canceled, and I had to stay one more night in in uh cleveland because that's where we flew out of and in the ho in the airport itself they have a satellite rock and roll hall of fame satellite store so i'm like i'm gonna go in there and just say what's up so i go in there i give my whole thing i'm like hey you know we i own this company and like i think it'd be really cool to do something with you guys and it's like a younger kid working there and like you know you always think like it's never really going to go any further than that just because that's what normally happens you know yeah and uh yeah two to literally uh Maybe a week later, I get an email from his boss saying, hey, I've got your contact info. You know, we have an event. Would you fly out to do this, this private event we're hosting at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? So I did these, a couple of these events with them where I got to meet, meet the people who run it and like the marketing director. And uh, who I'm also a big, he's a big Blame Shift fan, the guy who runs the whole music program for the, uh, for the oh. kids there. He, he's been to probably 15, 20 Blame Shift shows. And he's... <laughs> So we went out to dinner. We started talking. I'm like, yeah, we should make a bracelet that like has the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame on a guitar on the center of a bracelet. And, you know, so they ended up like we did this partnership and uh, we sell it on our site. They sell it in their store, uh, in their museum there. And it's super cool. It's uh, really awesome to be a part of that. You know, what is the website for Strong? I'm interested in it now. Like, I'm thinking, you know what? That might be kind of cool to have something like that. What's the, if someone wants to go buy some music inspired jewelry? That's what I call it because that's what I was told to call it. Where would they go to find your jewelry at? Yeah, so it's getstrung.com. So S T. Oh my God. Perfect name. Perfect name. Getstrung.com. <laughs> And then all, all the socials are just strong official for like the Insta and like 
the TikTok and all that stuff, you know. Yeah, you know, it's funny you brought up TikTok because I was about to bring up TikTok. You guys, I don't know, have had your TikTok account for very long. It looks like you just started it. You guys have one video on your yeah. TikTok, and it's actually for, from the song that we're going to play here, All or Nothing. So you just started, I would assume, this TikTok account. Only have a few followers on there, right? Yeah. Why did you wait so long to start a TikTok account? Because I just can't stand <laughs> new social media. Like I, I manage, you know, our Instagram is like a full time job between the band and between our our business, our Facebook accounts, our Twitter accounts, our website, our like the amount. You, of hold on, you, you hold on. You tweet. You you oh, actually I, I, you you go on Twitter or it's called X now whatever it's called. It's called X now. Uh, not not in a, not in a while. I think it's connected automatically to our like Facebook account. So I think things automatically okay. go over there. You go know? over there. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, just I, I'm like I don't want to like learn a new platform. But you know, we have a, a marketing team now that kind of helps us with our our Facebook and Instagram ads. So they like help us get the account going and. We're like, let's get the band account set up and we're going to start doing actively actually working the accounts because it's, you know, people purchase products through there. They find a lot of new bands and new artists all the time. So like, yes. you know, it makes sense for us to be on there on both, both levels. You know, I, when I first started doing this uh, podcast, my producer slash manager uh, was like, you got to get a TikTok account. And I was like, no, I don't, I do not yeah. want a TikTok yeah. account. I don't. But I'll tell you one thing, TikTok, when you want to reach out to the younger generation, the way it's unfortunate, really, a TikTok's cool, but it, the thing I hate about it is I'll watch a video and I'm laying down going to sleep. An hour later, I'm still laying down going to sleep, scrolling video after video after video. And I can't shut it down. And TikTok, for that reason, I do not like you. But so I also you love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't escape it, you know, but that's. That's why it's so good for uh, it draws people in. It doesn't let you out of their their gravitational hold, you know. <laughs> yeah, it, does, it does it. Now Jenny is the singer of Blame Shift. Okay, her I thought she was gonna be here. She's not here. Her birthday is coming up. Oh, what? What today? Saturday. So Tuesday. Yeah, I think is, is is her birthday. So we do want to wish her a happy birthday. And this isn't going to air till Monday. So you have some secret plans maybe for her. Can we talk about that for a second? I do. Yeah. We, I've, you know, we've just been working so hard in the past, like six months. Like we went to like all these music festivals around the country and then we came home and um, it just been a lot, you know, and we've been a little stressed about just like, good stress, you know, our, everything's growing and getting bigger and, but it's all still stress. You got to manage everything. And so I wanted to take her away. Um, and yeah, we're just, I'm doing like a, a little trip down to Miami. Um, we're staying like at this SLS hotel. It's uh, we're going right down to a pool party. As soon as we get there, I have like, I rented one of these little, uh, Moke cars. It's like a mini, like nice. electric Jeep thing that we're going to like, you know, probably drive into the ocean. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go party it up for we got four days down in Miami, and uh, it's gonna be great. She has no clue what's coming. I already packed their bags for her. She gets back later tonight. She had something that came up today, which I know she she wasn't really wanted to be here for this interview. Um, but she's gonna. Oh, I'm I'm sure she's so disappointed that she was not here for for, for this interview. I'm no, honestly, she, she she loves. I mean, we were actually work good as a team too when we uh, do interviews together instead of just looking at my ugly face, you know. But uh, yeah, so it's, it's cool. She's going to be super stoked. I can't wait to, I'm just going to, I have a guy coming to pick us up in the morning. I'm just going to wake her up and be like, you got like 10 minutes to get ready. And she's going to have no clue. So that is awesome, man. That is so yeah. cool. Right. We wish you guys blame shift the best of luck. We're going to play your new song right now. All or nothing. You guys have been promoting it like crazy. You can check it out on Spotify, wherever you stream your music, check out, listen to blame, blame shift. All or nothing, right here on the loud spot. I feel it in my body. I know that you're nobody, but I feel like somebody when I'm with you. you
Peace out, rock on, and much love. This is the loud spot outro by nothing short of tragic. Is this all talk with no action? No. Is this my thoughts with distraction? No. Is this what I bought that's in fashion? Or is this the loud spot with Sebastian? Yes. Does nothing short of tragic have his back again? Yes. Does everything that's good really have to end? Yes. A pin post, half a pin show, so to get more episodes, make an order, this is over.